it. Hello and welcome to the video by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In today's video, I'll be asking community questions submitted by you guys and girls to both Evan Upton and Gordon Hollingworth of Raspberry Pi. First off, who are these guys? Evan is currently the CEO of Raspberry Pi Trading, whilst Gordon is a regular in Mindfuse and the Director of Software Engineering at Raspberry Pi. Shot in a secluded corner of Pi Towers, watch and hear what they have to say on Windows 10, Raspberry Pi 2, the official display, and lots more. With the new Raspberry Pi 2, do you think Android has a future as a platform for the Pi? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, let me think. It's not. It's actually not so much about Raspberry Pi 2, it's about some of the work that's being done in the graphics stack. So I think what we're going to see over the next year is you're going to see us transitioning from a blob-based, the current blob-based graphics, to Eric and Holt's um, open source graphics stack. At that point, I think it becomes much more feasible. We're unlikely to invest money in Android here at Raspberry Pi, but with Eric's graphics stack, it's much more feasible for the community to produce an Android support for the Pi. So I've had quite a few questions about the official Raspberry Pi display and whether it's going to be out anytime soon. I was wondering if you could share any of the recent developments. Um, yeah, so we've been a little bit busy um, uh, doing other things. Um, I think people have, it's, people have wondered why it's taken us a while to get this product out the door and that's because they haven't been able to see until two weeks ago. They weren't able to see the other thing that we were working on. Now they can see the other thing that we've been working on. They can perhaps understand why we've been a bit busy. We do have production prototypes. There's a production prototype on Gordon's desk now that he's bringing up. That's supposed to be the final product. We think that will pass EMC. Uh, we think that will pass EMC cleanly. Um, if it does, well, we have a lot of inventory of the... I'm, I'm keen to get this product out of the door because I have $100,000 of uh, um, module in, of, of panel inventory sitting in uh, Sony's warehouse. Sony are keen to uh, get it out of the door because they have a bunch of pallets of uh, display panels clogging up space in their warehouse. Um, so um, I'm hoping end of this quarter, I mean let's say April, uh, I don't see, there's no obvious reason why we couldn't get it out of the door in April. It's a really nice product and we really want to get it out of the door and we do have a little bit of a clearer runway now to actually do the work. So um, Raspberry Pi's core competence is the Raspberry Pi itself the pro and so that's our, our kind of like highest priority. And displays are a, a kind of lower priority. It's like, you know, if you like, it's a project that's running on the back burner. Um, so over the last year, what you've seen is we've, re we've produced, uh, what, five different products. There's been um, Raspberry Pi, there's been a 2.1 revision, which we did right at the, like, uh, over, just over a year ago. There was um, the uh, B+, plus, there was the A+, plus, there was the Compute Module, and now Pi 2. All of those products basically have taken up time taken up our time um, and therefore meaning we've not been able to get uh, the the display actually into production into manufacture um, the other issue which has kind of pushed this back is um, is getting it through uh, EMC compliance so FCC compliance for the America or CE compliance for Europe a bunch of other ones that we have to do as well um, but basically the display uses um, an interface that is like it's very very difficult to get it through uh, through compliance um, just because of the way it works and uh, we're kind of like we want to make sure that uh, it's very important that we actually make sure that our, our, our uh, products actually do comply with with the relevant um, you know, uh, regulations in different countries so. so you know it's taken us a few bites of that cherry and therefore we've had to go through the process a number of times to get this so that's where we are, that's where we can How do you see Windows 10 fitting in with the educational aims of the foundation? Any new opportunities it opens up? And when will we see a package release? Okay, so Windows, I think Windows 10 is going to be very useful for people who want to do IoT stuff. I, mean, I think Microsoft do have a um, kind of quite a compelling story about why Windows is a good platform for doing IoT on. Uh, quite a lot of the projects we see people doing, educational projects we see people doing with the Pi are sort of basically IoT stuff. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, in terms of schedule, later this year, um, I think there'll be some announcements over the next couple of months uh, about the uh, about a series. Of, what we're hoping for is a series of developer releases, sort of culminating in a uh, um, culminating in a full release sometime later this year. And that will be uh, officially 
available to download from the download section of the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, website. that's the plan. So the plan is to provide a noobs, is to provide a noobs image for Windows 10, so you'll be able to select Raspbian or RISCOS or OpenELEC uh, or Windows 10. So some people are wondering what the plans will be for the Compute Module 2. Um, Obviously, we're going to do a Compute Module 2 at some point. Uh, it's not something we're going to do imminently. Um, yeah, right now, we're kind of focused on getting... There's enormous demand for Raspberry Pi 2. Right? I mean, they're going out the door at the most incredible rate. Um, and so right now, we have some chip infantry, and we're going to spend that chip infantry on Raspberry Pi 2s. Um, we want to make absolutely sure that everyone who wants a Raspberry Pi 2 can get one before we start looking at Compute Module 2. Compute Module 2 is doable, and we will do it, but it's going to be the second half of this year at the earliest. With regards to your answer about the Compute Module 2, I was wondering if you could tell us anything about the Raspberry Pi A2. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, astute readers will have noticed, uh, listeners, watchers, will have noticed that uh, the new product is called the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, sort of slightly cumbersome uh, name. Um, that leaves space in the namespace for a Raspberry Pi 2 Model A. Um, there isn't an immediate plan to do a um, to do a Model A. The reason being um, the twenty dollar price point is really really important to us. We could do a twenty five dollar A2 right now. Um, we can't do a twenty dollar A2. The, the maths doesn't stack up, particularly because we we want double the memory. I don't think a quad core nine hundred megahertz quad core machine with two five six megahertz RAM really makes a lot of sense. Um, so we want to double the, it's, it's a, you know, um, a couple of things that will make it more expensive. So we'd end up at 20 some dollars. So really, right now, we're going to stick with what we've got. It's nice to have, you know, I think a lot of the people who are buying Model A's don't need the extra memory or the extra processing power. Um, Model A Pluses don't need the extra memory or the extra processing power. So I think we're going to stick with what we've got. At some point in the future, it should become possible for us to offer a... Um, 512 meg, um, quad core, A plus, probably next year. I'm thinking sometime in 2016, uh, at which point uh, you know, we'll look at doing that. So, some people are wondering what's the current software roadmap for Raspberry Pi? Uh, okay, let me think. I um, guess the big theme this year is trying to um, be more standards based. Uh, we've got a number of people here working on, uh, on stuff in that area. So we've got Ross Oldfield here is working on KMS support, so exposing the composition capabilities of the Raspberry Pi hardware through the KMS API. Uh, obviously we have Eric at uh, Broadcom working on um, uh, Mesa Gallium OpenGL. I've got Phil Elwell here who's been working on um, uh, well, device tree recently, but it's going to be doing more sort of uh, uh, kind of kernel level performance optimization for the Pi. Um, Obviously, Dom continues to do loads of firmware stuff. Um, so there's a, there's. I think what you're going to see this year is kind of a whittling down of the blob. You know, gradually taking functions which are confined to the blob at the moment and moving those off onto the ARM. Uh, particularly, obviously, easier on Raspberry Pi 2 because we have a lot more ARM uh, processing power to go around. Um, we've got uh, various usability improvements. Obviously, we've got Simon's work on the user experience. We've got uh, more work on the web browser. Um, we were able to squeeze some multi-core rendering optimizations into the release that went out last week, um, and uh, there'll be more of that uh, coming along. Uh, let's see what else. Um, audio quality improvements. Jonathan's got some nice audio quality improvements coming up, um, and more scratch, uh, and repeating quite a lot of the optimizations we did for ARMv6. Ben Averson, uh, one of our contractors. Um, <coughs> has done a lot of work optimizing uh, Pixman, Memcopy, um, various bits and pieces of, uh, of the Squeak small talk VM uh, for uh, ARMv6. It's kind of going back, so he spent two years doing that. So A, we got a, uh, a bunch of ARMv6 code out, and B, what we got was a menu of all of the stuff that we need to do again for ARMv7, so Ben's going to go back and do that. It's quite a busy year. Were the needs of the Raspberry Pi the motivation behind the BCM2836's development? Have its sales got big enough to give it that clout in Broadcom? Um, so Raspberry Pi was definitely the is the kind of lead customer for 2836. Had a big role in the in the requirements planning uh, for 2836. Uh, it isn't a Raspberry Pi. It isn't a Raspberry Pi custom chip. But I mean, it's it's. It, I mean, I'm sure it'll be of interest to other people as well. But certainly, yeah, um, Raspberry Pi was the kind of the anchor customer for the for the device. Will we be sticking with a Debian-based distribution now that a Cambridge-sourced Ubuntu-derived one with ARM7 has popped up in the community? Uh, yeah, for now. Um, we like our Debian-based 
um, system gives us lots of flexibility. Obviously, the work that Simon's been doing um, is has made everything a lot prettier and shinier. So yeah, we like having our NOS distribution that we can hack on, that we can boost the performance of, that we can take memory consumption out of. It's good that there's an Ubuntu distribution, but and yeah, maybe I could see a year or two down the line if it becomes really fantastic and shiny and we find everyone's using it, we could absolutely move across. But right now, I think we've got. Um, I think we, we like Raspberry. As we know, other companies have been uh, unofficially duplicating the Pi's GPIO pinout to try and achieve compatibility, and unfortunately this has resulted in some ill feeling in the community. Some people think that it would be beneficial if the Raspberry Pi Foundation provided a Raspberry Pi compatible certification or something of that ilk, and uh, I've had a question that indicates that people would be interested to know the Foundation's thought on the matter. Um. So the, uh, the GPIO expander is kind of funny, the GPIO connector is kind of funny because it's proof if you make enough of something, uh, it, becomes a, it becomes a standard. We've seen particularly the 26 pin um, uh, footprint from, from, the, uh, from the Model A and Model B, um, we see that cropping up in all sorts of places. You know, there's an awful lot of boards with 26 pin connectors on when you look closely, they feel a lot like the Raspberry Pi, not just other small board computers, but also peripherals. I saw a, you know, quite a nice telecoms piece of hardware uh, last year. Uh, that had a 26 pin connector on, and I said, "There's a pin out on that." They're like, "Yeah, that's designed to connect to a designed to connect to a Raspberry Pi." In terms of whether we, I mean, in terms of whether there's ill feeling, I mean, I think it's kind of great that this kind of standard has has, has cropped up. Um, generally, I think when people use other SOCs and bring out a similar um, bring out a similar pin out, um, the level of compatibility it's a medium level of compatibility. You, know, you end up having GPIO. It's almost like you know, the power pins are kind of in the right place. GPIOs are kind of in the right place. Um, some of the slow speed interfaces end up on kind of the right pins, but it's kind of a middling level of compatibility. So I, I guess um, there's absolutely no ill feeling. I, I'm not sure that we could offer a. I, I can't immediately think of a of a way that we could offer a meaningful stamp. Um, of, of Raspberry Pi compatibility uh, for that sort of thing, but, um, but yeah, be open, I'd be open to it if it was meaningful, but I suspect that given the differences between SOCs, I suspect it's not going to be meaningful. With the release of the Pi 2 and the Astro Pi competition, I was wondering if you could tell me, number one, what board will be going up, and also, number two, will it be staying on the International Space Station after Tim Peake returns? Uh, so the board that will be going up is a B plus. So we've been certifying, we've been doing a flight certification for the board for a lot longer than we've had Pi twos. So we're not suddenly swapping to a Pi two. We're going to stick with what we've got. Um, and yeah, it's going to stay up there after he comes down. Uh, and hopefully this isn't the last we've seen of Astro Pi. Uh, I think the hope is if this is a success, so please, if you're in the UK, get your get your submissions in for Astro Pi. If this is a success, then we'll um, we're hoping that ESA will try and replicate. The, uh, we'll try and replicate the activity in other um, member mm -hmm. countries. In your opinion, what's the most exciting door the Raspberry Pi 2 now opens? Um, it's a PC. That's it. It's a PC. You know, Raspberry Pi 1 was a good PC in so far as it cost 35 bucks. Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 2 is a good PC. Yeah, it removes that caveat. So for me, I mean, it's really important because yeah, we think providing access to cheap computers for people is a good thing. We also think if we can provide access to cheap computers to kids, kids are going to be more inclined to um, people. Are, uh, kids are going to be more inclined to have this in their bedroom, and that means that they're going to be more likely to be exposed to um, programming. And sadly, that was all I had time for. Stay tuned in the future for more interviews with important people in the field of Raspberry Pi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, bye.